Curious Lloyd. Our solar system is a pretty cool place. It seems to get more and more interesting by the day. Right now, we are looking to establish a human settlement on Mars. 100 years ago, something like that would never have been possible. Some argue that right now, it still isn't. However, you never know what could happen in the next 11 years. Anything is possible, since space is so fascinating. I figured that now would be a good time to take a look at those wondrous things we may have forgotten about our solar system while discovering some amazing interesting facts about our solar system. The hottest planet isn't closest to the sun. Many people know that Mercury is the closest planet to the sun. Well, less than half of the Earth's distance. It is no mystery. Therefore, why would people assume that Mercury is the hottest planet? We know that Venus, the second planet for away from the Sun, is on average 30 million miles further than Mercury. The natural assumption is that being further away, it must be cooler. But assumptions can be dangerous, for practical consideration. Mercury has no atmosphere, no warming blanket to help it maintain the Sun's heat. Venus, on the other hand, is shrouded by an unexpectedly thick atmosphere, about a hundred times thicker than our own Earth. This in itself would normally serve to prevent some of the Sun's energy from escaping back into space, and thus raise the overall temperature of the planet. But in addition to the atmosphere's thickness, it is composed almost entirely of carbon dioxide, a potent greenhouse gas. The carbon dioxide freely lets solar energy in, but is far less transparent to longer wavelength radiation emitted by the heated surface. Thus the temperature rises to a level far above what would be expected, making it the hottest planet. In fact, the average temperature on Venus is about 875 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to melt tin and lead. The maximum temperature on Mercury, the planet closer to the Sun, is about 800 degrees Fahrenheit. In addition, the lack of atmosphere causes Mercury surface temperature to vary by hundreds of degrees, whereas the thick mantle of carbon dioxide keeps the surface temperature of Venus steady, hardly varying at all, anywhere on the planet or any time of day or night. Almost everything on Earth is a rare element. The elemental composition of planet Earth is mostly iron, oxygen, silicon, magnesium, sulfur, nickel, calcium, sodium, and aluminium. While such elements have been detected in locations throughout the universe, there are merely trace elements, vastly overshadowed by the much greater abundances of hydrogen and helium. Thus, Earth, for most of the part, is composed of rare elements. This does not signify any special place for for Earth. However, the cloud from which the Earth was formed had a much higher abundance of hydrogen and helium, but being like gases, they were only driven away into space by the sun's heat as the Earth formed. There are Mars rocks on Earth that us, the human race, didn't bring here. Chemical analysis of meteorites found in Antarctica, the Sahara Desert, and elsewhere have been shown by various means to have originated on Mars. For example, some contain pockets of gases that is chemically identical to the Martian atmosphere. These meteorites may have been blasted away from Mars due to a large meteoroid or an asteroid impact on Mars, or by a huge volcanic eruption and later collided with Earth. We live inside the sun. Normally we think of the sun as being that big hot ball of 93 million miles away. But actually, the sun's outer atmosphere extends far beyond its visible surface. Our planet orbits within this tenderous atmosphere, and we see evidence of this when gusts of the solar wind generate the northern lights and the southern lights. In that sense, we definitely live inside the sun. But the solar atmosphere doesn't end at Earth. Auroras have been observed on Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and even the distant Neptune. In fact, the outer solar atmosphere, called the helosphere, is thought to extend at at least 100 AU, that's nearly 10 million miles. In fact, the atmosphere is likely a teardrop shape due to the sun's motion in space, with the tail, extending tens to hundreds of billions of miles downwind. Pluto was discovered by accident. As objects in space move, their trajectories can be influenced by the gravity of other objects, slightly changing or protubing the trajectory over time. 
After Uranus was discovered in 1781, astronomers noted a small and unexpected deviation from its predicted orbit. They guessed that this may have been due to the gravitational pull of some object farther out. They began a search from an object further from the Sun than Uranus, and in 1846, German astronomer Johann Gale discovered Neptune from observations based on mathematical predictions. However, astronomers suspected that Neptune could not be the sole cause of Uranus deviations from its original calculated orbit. They refined their calculations and started to look again, and in 1930 an American astronomer Clyde Tabar discovered Pluto, which for 76 years was considered the ninth planet of our solar system. However, since the astronomers have discovered that the supposed perturbations that cause Uranus, excess orbital deviations were imaginary, revised calculations showed no need to look for any additional gravitational influence, and so Pluto was discovered by Serendipity. Saturn isn't the only planet with rings. Although Saturn's rings are certainly the most beautiful and easily observed, Jupiter, Uranus and Neptune also have rings. While Saturn's bright rings likely are made up of ice particles, Jupiter's very dark and difficult to observe rings apparently are composed of dust particles. They may contain tiny fragments of broken up meteorites or asteroids and perhaps particles ejected by the volcanic moon Io. The ring system of Uranus is slightly more distinct distinctive than Jupiter's, but still very faint, and possibly resulted from collision between small moons. The rings of Neptune are faint and dark, much like those of Jupiter. These dim rings of Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune cannot be seen in small telescopes from Earth, so Saturn is still Lord of the Rings, but is not the only ring bearer. The clouds of Venus are sulfuric acid. Just 50 years ago, astronomers had no idea what Venus was really like. They knew it was closer to the Sun than the Earth, and hence was likely hotter, but not until the late 1960s when Soviet probes first analyzed the atmosphere. What they discovered was startling. Not only is Venus hotter than Earth, much hotter, its atmosphere is much thicker. In fact, the atmospheric pressure of the surface of Venus is nearly a hundred times heavier than we experience on Earth. Unprotected humans and spacecraft would be very quickly disabled and crushed by more than 1,300 pounds per square inch pressure. They would be asphyxiated by the oxygen less carbon dioxide atmosphere and quickly baked by the 900 degree Fahrenheit temperature. A typical home oven on the Earth Earth goes up to only about 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Venus is an unwelcome place. But wait, if the temperature pressure and the lack of oxygen are not enough, Venus has one more weapon against unwanted forms of life, sulfuric acid. It seems that the particles that form the planet's enveloping white clouds are formed from sulfur dioxide and droplets of sulfuric acid, battery acid for example. Although the sulfuric acid forms a kind of rain, it does not reach the ground on Venus, nor it is as prevalent as originally thought, but in any event, Venus is a very nasty place. The sun is not burning. Even in this day and age, people still think that the sun is on fire. Others know that it is not burning really, but have no clue as to what is happening. The sun is not burning. Burning or combustion is a chemical reaction involving the electrons in orbit about the nuclei of atoms such as hydrogen and oxygen. Burning is not really that efficient. Physicists have calculated that if the sun were composed of sun combustible materials, say coal or wood, it could burn for only a few thousand years which is less than even than the known age of human civilization. Since what we know, the sun has been around for much, much longer than that. It can't be burning. Not to mention that the fact it would need an oxidant to complete the process. So the sun is not burning. It precedes heat, light and energy through a more basic and efficient process called nuclear fusion. In nuclear fusion, the very hearts of atoms are transformed from one element to another, which releases tremendous amounts of energy. We have harnessed the same process in form of hydrogen or a nuclear bomb. In this way, the sun has been able to shine with without burning for billions of years.
We may be drinking comets. Comets are relatively rare today. Seeing a big bright comet is once in a lifetime event for some people. But long, long, long ago, they were much more common. In fact, the solar system formed some billion years ago. Astronomers believe that comets were much more common. They frequently crashed into Earth long before humans and perhaps before any life existed on our planet. Astronomers have determined that comets are composed mostly of ice or water and ice. One popular theory is that so many many of these icy bodies crashed into Earth, that their ices melted and formed Earth's oceans. Although there are other possibilities and some questions remain, the idea that our oceans are really melted comets is probably the best. So go and have yourself a glass of comet. So there you have it, nine interesting facts of our interesting solar system. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up and I'll catch you next Sunday with another video.